Welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. Welcome to the BB Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Hey guys, welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. I break down all things BB22 All Stars. This is a special pre recorded, not live. I always go the wrong way. Um, I'm lying to you. It's not live. It's pre recorded. This is some spoilers and things that have been going on on the live feeds. Don't forget <laughs> to follow me on social media on Twitter at BB or Jolene, BB22, and at Jolene Lunzer on Instagram. Most appreciated. If this is your first time on my channel, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then smash the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get started with some Friday Big Brother spoilers. Okay, coming off yesterday and the triple eviction, Nicole's big mad. Nicole is like, how dare you? How dare you put me on the block? How dare you? How dare I go on the block and have to play this game? How dare I? So she's very upset, you guys. She's very mad at Christmas. Nicole was also picked to be a have not by Enzo because Frazzled Franzel is the only one in the house who has yet to do two rounds as a have not. And she's like, they're trying to make me weak, Cody. They're trying to make me weak. And Cody's like, I was able to win the veto on slop. So you'll be able to. So Nicole is the only have not since they uh, got rid of David. So she wanted to just sleep her time away up in the have not room. However, Christmas had different plans. Christmas is scrambling and gambling. Cringe Miss does not know what to do. She does not know what to do. She, now that it's out that her and Ty Ty voted against Frazzled Franzel, and then Enzo ruined the whole triple eviction. We talked about it on last night's live. Check out the live. Link in the description if um, you want to see what I had to say. But let me just say, Enzo ruined the uh, triple eviction. If anyone, if anyone doubts that, um, it's true. Enzo ruined the triple eviction. He had one job, one job. And that would have been amazing. But instead, oh, we saw Kevin and David go home. And then only one member of the committee, which was Danny. All right, so Christmas spends the night as well in the have not room. And then she wakes up this morning. So not really a lot of conversation happened last night. Uh, but this morning, <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness. Christmas woke up. She didn't even take her retainers out. She didn't even brush her morning breath out of her mouth. And, of course, Grandpa Memphis, Grandpa Nashville was up drinking his coffee. And she walked down with a blanket around her. She looked completely disheveled. Morning breath, retainer, and Memphis is like, good morning, sweetheart. I went to bed at 7 p.m. last night. No, they actually had to stay awake because something did happen last night, you guys. I didn't want to talk about it because it's not that big of a deal. And uh, I hate saying it, but Cody won the HOH. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Cody won the HOH. He won another HOH. He was just HOH. And then we had two other HOHs for like a second. And they got their letters and they read them last night. Boring. And then Cody one HOH. Ugh. We can't have anything nice in 2020. So that's what happened last night. So Christmas wakes up this morning. Memphis is like, howdy. Hey, I'm Memphis. Grandpa Memphis, AARP me. And he was talking to cringe miss and greeted her. And immediately he's like, give me a hug. And then she just breaks down. She cried. It was the longest hug I've ever seen in big brother history. It was awkward. It was weird. There's some definite chemistry between Nashville and cringe miss. If you guys have seen it, let me know in the comments, but it's there. It's there. They get each other in a weird way that no one else on this planet will ever understand either one of those very strange individuals. Uh, but they get each other and she cried and she was like, I'm sorry, I haven't even brushed my teeth yet. And I'm just thinking, Oh God, Oh God, this isn't survivor. The bathroom's over there. Go brush your teeth real quick. Get some fresh breath, get the tongue. Don't forget the tongue and always floss. You could have easily done that. And she didn't, she, uh, hugged him. And then she's like, I gotta go take my retainer out. And I thought, okay, she's gonna brush her teeth this time. She's for sure gonna brush her teeth. Cause again, this isn't Survivor. There's running water in a bathroom right around the corner. No, she took her retainers out. She wiped away her tears a little bit. She went to the bathroom and then went back and was like, I still haven't brushed my teeth, but I'm gonna have coffee. And she basically told Memphis that she is upset and she just, she felt emotionally drained. She could not believe she was on the wrong side of the vote. Now, in my opinion, she was on the right side and Enzo just meow meow pussed out, but now everybody knows. And so she feels like she's betrayed Nicole. And Nicole, whew, do not scorn a woman from Oobly Goobly, Michigan, because she was like, it's not fair. I got put up twice. You would think she went to war. You would think she's a veteran or something. Like she's got PTSD from being on the block twice. Okay, there are people in this house who had to sit on the block week after week after week and be like, what is this? What's going on? What is happening? She's so insulated and she's so entitled that the fact that she is on the block, she's like, no one's ever been through this kind of pain that I've been through. And she wakes up and she's talking to the camps. A lot of talking to the camps by Franzel. Franzel is actually talking to Dom. 
because she's afraid that in Christmas's goodbye message to Danny, that she might have been outed as talking crap about Danny. Because guess what, guys? She was talking crap. She was. She was. But now that Christmas flipped the script and voted Frazzled Frazzle out, she's like, maybe Danny wasn't that bad. Dom, I'm sorry. She grabbed the Bible. I kid you not. I kid you not, you guys. She grabbed the Bible, put it on her arm. She goes, are the lives on? Are the live feeds on? Okay. Um... Dom, I thought Danny was talking mad about me, and I'm so sorry, and I made a mistake. I hate Christmas. I hate Memphis. I hate Tyler. They're the biggest liars I've ever met in my life. I hate them. I'm holding the Bible. I I mean it. I super mean it. So she's talking. <laughs> even the cams, even the live feed was like, no, and they went to a different camera because, no, we're not having it. Okay, so Nicole's She's not getting over this. She laid in bed and she said, I just want to be a drama queen. I just want to have a drama queen moment. I'm tired of this. This is not fair. I, mean, I hate them so much. I'm going to stay up here the rest of my life. So she's pouting. She's pouting because she's a very mature, almost 30 year old woman. And she is definitely pouting. Again, she says she hates Christmas. She hates Tyler. She hates Memphis. She's told Cody this. The only people she trusts, she even told the cams, or Cody, obviously, they're the original final two. Even the wall yellers were like, hey guys, hey guys, you know what? There's a pregame alliance that's super strong and going to run through this house and end up in final two if you don't do something about it. Should we remind you again? We'll be back next week. And still they're like, could they be a final two? Enzo and Christmas keep talking on the feeds about, it's weird, y'all. It's weird. It's weird that like you're invited to her wedding. Like your mom's invited, y'all. That's like, whoa, that's next level. Yeah, yeah. He's going to drag her. He's going to drag her to the end so he can put her next to him because he thinks he can just easily beat her. <sighs> They're not believing um, what is true. And the truth was the wall yellers were trying to help this season and pick it up and make them play game and make these pre-gamers actually have to work for it rather than going in to ready-made alliances. Okay. So Nicole holds the Bible again. She's like, I made a huge mistake about her. Okay. I can't stand Christmas this much. Like this much, so big. And tr I trust no one. She was like Tupac. She was like, trust no one. Uh, <laughs> Nicole regrets keeping Tyler. Duh. All of us at home were screaming when you and Danny did that. Why? You, are, you already put him on the block. Now you got to take him out. It's basic big brother. You have to take him out because he will come for you. So what Danny got and what Nicole got last night, Nicole barely got it. But mostly Danny, she got karma. I know karma doesn't technically happen until the second life, but it's like the universe was speaking to her. Um, and so was big brother. And if you put someone up and you make them a target, even if you take them down, you're like, just kidding, just kidding. You still put their name out there. You still put them on the block. They are then going to have a reason to target you. So for them to be surprised, that Ty Ty Big Perm would take a shot at them is crazy. But Nicole now is so anti Tyler. She's like, we made a mistake, okay? Because when you look in his eyes, there's nothing there. It's nothing. He's like the devil. Like, literally, that's what she said. He's such a liar. He's the biggest liar she's ever met. She keeps saying on the feeds about Ty Ty Big Perm, Tyler. And she keeps saying that there's nothing there when you look in his eyes. Nothing. Just nothing. He's the biggest liar I've ever seen, even a Vic, ever. This is what she says. You guys, I wrote it down on a whiteboard. I'm reading it off the whiteboard because I wanted to get exactly what she said down. I was just thinking, holy shit. If they ever remake Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen and they need Confessions of a 30-Year-Old Drama Queen, Nicole Franzel's cast, okay? She will be the new Lindsay Lohan. So then we had a lot of talks with Cody up in the HOH room before he makes his noms. As of right now, the feeds are still down for the nomination ceremony, but it's most likely, almost 99.9% .9 going to be Tyler and Cringemas. So Ty Ty and American Horror Story are going on the block. So they both have talked to Cody, COVID Cody, in the HOH room. And Ty Ty is just like, I don't know, man. I was just thinking about Angela's like vegan cookbook. And I was thinking about our trinket business. And I was like, I wonder how they're selling. Code Tyler1 POV and HOH on the triple. I know it's a long code, but put it in for 0.2% off our expensive trinkets. Tyler's just playing the dummy, which isn't the worst idea at this point, I guess. Um, but both their stories are kind of convoluted, mostly cringe misses story. And they immediately start throwing each other under the bus. So Ty Ty throws cringe miss under the bus, which eh, makes sense, uh, to blame her for the vote. And here's the deal. Before he even throws cringe miss under the bus, Memphis goes into the HOH room to talk to Cody. And Memphis is like, I think it was Christmas. I think she's the antagonist. 
And COVID Cody's like, okay, so like, I was thinking about it, like, and I was rolling my jeans, like a tight roll on the bottom and like putting on my white sneaks with no socks, super cool model style. And I was thinking like, oh my God, it's totally cringe miss. She's behind all this. It couldn't possibly be Tai Tai. Tai Tai couldn't do this. That's what Memphis says too. And I'm like, Memphis, you're in a final three with cringe miss. I mean, are you just trying to put the target bigger on her back so you don't go on the block? But technically you shouldn't be worrying about going on the block because you do have this wise guys final three with Cody and Enzo and then Enzo and Christmas. But maybe he's just trying to make the target bigger on cringe miss thinking, all right, she's most likely going to go up. But it just seemed a little strange that he's the first person to say he believes cringe miss is the antagonist. If he's Christmas's true ally, then he should go up there and be like, I think Tyler started it and cringe miss fell for it. And do what you got to do, man. It's just unfortunate or something like that. It's like this big brother game just hands Ty Ty stuff. There's here you go, Tyler. Here, Tyler, here you go. Tyler's like, I don't want to play. I want to go home. I want to hang out with Angela. I want to be a vegan. I want to swim in my pool. Okay. I want to play with my curls. I don't want to be here. And everyone's like, please, Tyler, please. We'll do anything. We'll take you on the block and then pull you off. Okay. We will blame someone else <laughs> for a vote that you did. Okay. We will blame one of our own allies. Memphis is not technically in an alliance anymore with Tyler since the committee is now coming for each other. Enzo and COVID Cody are and cringe misses. So there's really no reason for Memphis to throw cringe miss under the bus this bad, but they do. Nevertheless, they do. Never doubt that these guys of Big Brother love to throw the women under the bus. They love it. Even when cringe miss is going to, you know, Grandpa Memphis hugging them and thinking that that's her ally and in a final three with him, he still throws her under the bus. How nice, Grandpa Memphis. But it's probably because she didn't brush her teeth. And if someone comes at me with morning breath and has no respect for me or my space and then gets up in my grill and stuff, I'm, I'm probably going to throw them under the bus too. There's nothing worse than stinky, awful breath. Ugh. So COVID Cody's doing COVID Cody when he's up in the HOH room. Every time someone gives him a reason for why they did this or that in the game, he just is trying to make them feel better, but not really. He just says, like, totally, like, you probably, like, yeah, you probably, like, did that because, like, you thought it was right at the time. Like, it might have thrown me under the bus. Like, it might have, I don't know. I don't know where what you were thinking, but, like, you did it, and that's, like, cool. So COVID Cody talks to Tyler and tries to make him feel a little bit better, and he's just like, dude, I'm not going to come for you. You're my bro. You're my dude. You're my homie. Like, I love you. I love you, kid. Bro, yo. Bro, yo, bro, yo. Like, 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 bro, yo. And then Ty Ty says... Thanks, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. I fucked up. I fucked, that's what he said. The first thing when he walked in, I fucked up. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. And then he leaves, knowing that he's most likely going to go on the block. And that's what Cody was hinting at. Then Christmas comes in, cringe miss. And she's like, here is the bus. I'm driving it right. And I'm just throwing Ty Ty under it. And she basically is blaming Tyler and Memphis and Enzo and everyone she can but herself for misunderstanding how the vote was supposed to go, even though she voted first. And COVID Cody obviously does not believe cringe miss. He wants cringe miss out. That's his target. But if all else fails and cringe miss wins the veto and takes herself off the block, Cody's going to have to put up a replacement, but Tyler will go. So the only time Tyler would go home is if cringe miss wins the POV. So she is just doing everything she can. I feel really bad for what I did to Nicole and I'm evil. And if I had my car, she'd be dead. I mean, I'm just trying to play this game and I don't know. Maybe it was Danny. She brings up Danny. She goes, maybe Danny set us up to look bad. Yeah, that's it. It's Danny. Danny's evil. I hate Danny. I'm going to drive over Danny when I get out of this house. And Cody's like, okay, well, it was nice talking to you. But yeah, she just throws Tyler. She just throws the whole house in. And then says how much she loves Nicole, didn't mean to vote her out, oopsies, and uh, how she's never spoke badly about Nicole, nor Cody. So don't put me up. But then she leaves knowing that she's going to be put on the block. Then Christmas and Nicole have a conversation, and Christmas goes in the have-not room where Nicole's like, when you want Christmas, it's like so rude what you did. It's so rude. And Christmas, cringe miss, just tells her, you know, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I blacked out. She just is making every excuse in the book for um, voting against Nicole, but she does say that she did mess up, but it's too late, cringe miss. You cannot get Nicole. Oh, oh, she put you in that locked box. She said early in the season she has where she stores everyone who's wronged her and then she locks their name in there and then she pulls it out when she needs to get revenge. She doesn't say her feelings right out to the person or clear it up or anything. She just puts it in the box and then tucks it deep, deep, deep down. Cause that's very healthy. And then when she can, 
she seeks her oobly goobly revenge. She's like, oh, you want to play with me? Okay, I will take you out to the fields of oobly goobly and bury your body where no one can find you. Gosh, this is a creepy update, but it is October and these house guests are creepy. Ultimately, they hug at the end and Nicole's like, it's okay, I guess, like, whatever. And you're like a total bitch, but it's fine. They make up, but you can tell it's... It's not going to be like what it was. They're great, great friendship. <laughs> they did not have a good friendship. But uh, now, Nicole, you cannot score, Nicole. You cannot play this game. Nicole, she will not forgive you. And Cringe Miss knows it. And so this might be Cringe Miss's last week. Fingers crossed, you guys. Then Christmas and Enzo talk. And Enzo, you know, he, <laughs> Enzo, oh. I'm so mad at him about the triple eviction Ugh, in his boat. Ugh. It would be one thing, you guys, if he didn't play it up all the time and say, yo, I'm going to make big moves. Yo, this bullshit. Yo, 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 yo. When he has no intention of doing it. Quit lying. We see it. We see you. Why are you lying to us, the audience? We see everything. What are you talking about? You are not. You are going to just miss these people because he does. There is something so important in this game and in life about likability. You can get away with so much more when you're likable. You really can. And Enzo just has that likability with these house guests. They're like, he's great. He's, oh my gosh, he's so funny. Like how he all tells us what we want to hear, which is like totally fake, but it's so great. And in this game, that really works for him because no one is comparing notes on Enzo. And right now he is so safe and he is so solid on every corner of the game. So whoever he talks to, when he talks to COVID Cody, he's like, yo man, take these bitches out. Like what's wrong with these women? Like I'm sick of this shit. Like I'm not here to do feelings, okay? I'm here to have stains in my underpants, all right? I'm here to say shitty jokes, get it? Shitty jokes. Oh, Enzo, yo, when you get out of here, yo, yo, bro, yo, you gotta come to my rap show. Like I'm like, boom, 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 like I, I do it. I do the damn thing. You're like, what Enzo, you're, what, you're like, mid forties. What are you talking about? And then when he talks to Christmas, he's like, yo, we gotta, we gotta keep you. Yo, we gotta get rid of Tyler. And he talks to Tyler and he says, Tyler, yo, Christmas crazy. She cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on the real. Yo, we gotta get rid of her. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to Atlanta where the plague is played. And then he turns into Jermaine Dupree. It's amazing. It's amazing. You guys, he has been able to trick all these house guests. This is how we know these are not true all-stars. They're getting played in a mental game by Enzo. Enzo is playing, Enzo is just like de -de 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 -de, telling them and they're not whatever he thinks they want to hear. And they're like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Just building up their egos and they never question him, but everyone else in the house they've questioned, but they never question him. It is truly ridiculous. <laughs> that Enzo, Mr. How do I use a bidet? Mr. I don't think I wiped all the way. Yo, my butt be itching is mentally... <laughs> just dominating these people with social and emotional manipulation. So it, it's, it is what it is. As they say on this show, it is what it is. Is it though? Is it what it is? Every house guest at some point is like, yo, it is what it is. Yo, I don't know. It is what it is. Yo, just like, whatever, let's just play the game. And so you had a chance to play the game last night. You could have taken a big hit. But now he's reaffirmed in the house being like, I made the right decision. Yo, it's their fault, Tyler and Christmas. Yo, that they're on the wrong side of the boat and I'm on the right side of the boat. Hi, hey, yeah. As of now, it looks like Tyler, Ty Ty Big Perm, and Cringe Miss Christmas American Horror Story will be the ones going on the block because of their vote for Nicole. And COVID Cody is going to keep Nicole, his little baby sister, his little engine that couldn't, safe as long as he can so that he can drag her by her messy bun to the finale and then beat her. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if Nicole can make it that far without any wins, without anything, and just using all these meat shields, she might have a defense to win this damn game. So there's your updates, you guys. That's what's going on in the live feeds. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Who do you hope goes home this week? What would be your best scenario for this week? I know we are scraping the bottom of the barrel and everyone who's remotely likable has went home, but we're still watching this show. That's what's happening. We're still watching it, or you're still watching me, which thank you if you are. If you wanna support the channel, there are links for my Patreon, Venmo, PayPal and Cash App below. Follow me, boom, on my social media. One day I'll learn spatial relations. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you so much for almost to 12K subs. And it's all thanks 
to you guys. Hope you have a wonderful Friday. I'll be back very soon with a, another Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. And Sunday, I'll be going live with Jessica Milagros from BB21. And we'll be breaking down all the great stuff on the live feeds. Until then, take care, everybody. Wear your mask. Bye. <laughs>